Betty. I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. And ahora vamos a parte dos con Carlos Alasraki. Which means now we're going to part two with Carlos Alasraki. So I'm getting more opportunities yeah. to play mm -hmm. Latino characters. Uh, Puss in Boots, I'm playing the mayor, like I said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hopefully some more, whatever. Yeah, more now, what about voicing yeah. in the actual... Uh, Spanish language, any no, stuff like that. I really? have, I did the Taco Bell commercials in, in Spanish because I was able to speak slowly and, yeah. the, and it was written for me. So, mm -hmm. can't this boat go any faster? Este nave no puede ir más rápido. I was able to do stuff like that. Oh, okay. I played this character named JJ Hightail for Direct Auto Insurance. He's like a race car driver. <laughs> he's, he's good. He's their version of Flo. Yeah. 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 And basically, that voice is my friend Henry Cho, who was over at my house the other day. He goes, "Yeah, man, that's me. You owe me ten percent, man." <laughs> So JJ uh, is their spokesperson. He's on and now in Illinois and California, but in all the Southeast states. Look up direct out on church, JJ Hotel. Well, I did the sp uh, commercials in Spanish as yeah. well last year. Although this time around, different ad agencies they changed JJ's character, and also with the Spanish market, they just had me say less. Mm -hmm. Last year's Spanish market was I had to speak pretty good Spanish which I had to work on, yeah, and yeah. then drop into JJ. So I, I would say something like, Oh my gosh. Si usted necesita seguro de auto, llama directo a direct auto. You know, I had to do stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, that's so, funny. Directo yeah. a direct auto. auto. Llama directo a direct auto. That's so yeah, funny. you had to use those skills of being able to, and try not to do the Argentina, che, llama, llama directo. Yeah. yeah it has to right. be that neutral right. sort of Spanish, you know. So uh, yeah, I've, I've 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 had occasion where I've had to speak Spanish and had that's to study cool, it. man. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that you might have. I mean, because you yeah. speak it, you know. I'm pretty good, yeah. fourth grade level maybe, mm -hmm. and I really try with Leticia and Sergio next door. I give it my best. Yeah, and it's hard. Yeah, you, you don't feel confident. Yeah, you're, you're. It's about a third of your personality comes out when yeah. the language is not there to back you up. Yeah, right, well, right. you know, when I came, yeah. my first language was Spanish, and when we came down here from Cuba and to America. And I and everybody's like speaking English. You know, I was in kindergarten. I remember my teacher. I was speaking Spanish, and I remember my teacher saying, "Listen, Carlos, you're in America now, so you need to speak English." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Oh, okay." And I went home and I told my family, "We're in America now. We have to speak English." Mm -hmm. I did not speak Spanish again till I was 18 years old. Mm. All right, took it to heart, right? And it's like, so I forgot all of it. Like, mm. I'm like, I can listen to it and understand it, but when but I'm now talking, you're fluent, though, but then, like and then when I was 18, I'm like, this yeah. is silly. I gotta start talking Spanish again. Mm -hmm. And I started, yeah. now I'm pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Probably about your grade, fourth grade Spanish. So that's yeah. good. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you made a value. You know. it it, it's all it takes, because it's beautiful. And it, it does lend to your vocal dexterity. And, and I tell people, I'm not able to speak rapidly in Spanish because mm -hmm. my mouth can't physically make the shapes fast enough. Yeah. If you don't practice, mm -hmm. you know, I know there's a guy, a really great voice actor, Christian Lance, who's totally American, yeah. eh, Carlos, from Mexico City, but then yeah. he's Hispanic, he's perfect, you know? Wow. Very right. My friend Lombardo Boyar, who's going to be in Murder in the First, uh, Stephen Bochco project, but his, he's uh, Tex-Mex from uh, El Paso. He's able to do both because he's kept it up. He's Beautiful. able to speak rapidly, and, and you can't. And the reason I'm able to do... I don't even remember a Glaswegian accent. It's because I watched, and that lip never moves. And I watched Rob Nesbitt, I study the facial structure. And if you don't have that, you, and you're not practicing it, you can't go that, you can't go that quickly. Yeah. But if it, it's just a, it's a practicing thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, it that's is cool, like man. it is like a muscle working out. I mean, you you if you do not keep those chops up. Now, as a stand-up comic, obviously your your improv skills. I would say are very. They're pretty good. Fine tuned. They're pretty high say? tuned. Yeah, Tom Kenny is like a probably the, the finest example of that. Out of stand up, he's just got a thesaurus in his head that's incredible. But yeah, that definitely helps you bring the comedy out of scenes where sometimes it's not there. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you you want to amp it up because that's your your natural instinct is to do that. But uh, I, I would say that my improv skills are waning being a new parent again. I have no... Uh, yes, very uh, young child. Get from here to there. Don't die. So working on camera and in voiceover, do you, what is it you still like about doing on camera? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. There, there's a different challenge. Sometimes it's going to be more uh, a subtle type of acting. Mm. Certainly the goal of now voice actors is to have some sort of on-camera presence so that we can get better voiceover jobs, right, you know? right. You know, you want that primetime series. You want that feature role in an, in, in an animated series. But there were times when Reno was so fun because we're pretending 
There's not, there's short setups, there's no table reads, we're just making stuff up and we're improv I was going to say- Is the whole show improv? It, yeah, yeah, it was all, it was mostly- most of the time. Yeah, wow. we would get an so A, B, no and script. C. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. But there was days that, you know, the whole day you'd be in your trailer waiting for your, to be right. called and, and a knock right. on the door, and so it was boring, as opposed to voiceover, you go right in and yeah. right away you're yeah. doing yeah. your stuff. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So each had its merits, each had its up and down times, mm -hmm. but they're, they're both fun. You know, I'm auditioning for some stuff tomorrow, and if you get to play a character that's fun, it's great. I just did a, uh, Stephen Glickman is directing these uh, segments for YouTube television yeah. for Beggin Strips. And one of the concepts he wrote was a three minute 1950s family, uh, black and white, Hugh Beaumont and kids. Uh, they, uh, they talk about that there's not a dog treat that's also a dog toy, and that won't happen until the future. And so that's the, the concept of the spot is that this dog from the future appears on a time machine. But mm. we got to play the, I got to play a 1950s father. Hey, how about you, son? Mm. These potatoes are, these butter cookies are real buttery. How about you, son? And that's with Tara Strong, right? Yeah, that was with yeah. Tara. Yeah. Now, come on, son, out with it. Your mom spent all this time making those cookies. And it's so fun. Yeah, that's just, great, man. You got some great, great characters. Yeah, very, definitely very, very do. believable. Definitely do. And totally different. Hey, I got a cool question for you because uh, I'm a Reno 911 fan. Yeah. I know there's a lot of them out there. Do you have like you know a story, something you know goofy, something fun, maybe a, a, a that relates to I, the show? I, I thought one of the most surreal things is when Kenny Rogers came on the set. We were uh, set up uh, out by a mall near Torrance, and the, we were doing a sting where we're watching this Liberace's piano. And we're looking out for people that are going to steal this piano. <laughs> and when we pulled up the first day, all these plain clothes DEA cops got out, got out of their cars and walked over to the set and go, what are you guys doing here? And we're like, we're filming Reno 911. Okay, because we've set up a sting here at the mall. <gasps> and we just want to make sure that you guys aren't going to mess with that. You say you yeah, are. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, and then they're like, oh my God, Reno, we love you guys. <laughs> so there was, there was this kind of oh, standoff. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then they found out who we were. And in that same Kenny Rogers episode, we're, we're driving around Northridge, and the gist of the sketch is that Garcia is going to take Kenny Rogers on a circu circuitous route so he won't get followed by stalkers. Mm. So the premise is Kenny Rogers is pissed off. He's sitting in the front of the car with me. They start the camera, and they say, drive around and just make stuff up. Yeah. So I, I, I knew everything about Brady Hawk's movies yeah. and about The Gambler, and he's just like, oh, my God, this guy. And he was <laughs> improv and he's in the front seat of my car, and people often thought we're real cop cars. Mm -hmm. So I pulled up next to this girl with Kenny Rogers in the car, and I'm like, <laughs> I want her to look over, so I'm honking a horn, and she, because she thinks I'm a cop, she won't look. I'm like, Kenny oh. Rogers is right here in the front of a cop car. Look, it's Kenny Rogers. God, no and she way wouldn't home. turn around. Oh, that's and I just funny. thought that was bizarre. Oh, that's there was crazy. One moment, season four, where uh, Garcia is going to arrest uh, Dangle's boyfriend. Yeah. And he doesn't want the wedding to happen because we don't want to lose Dangle. And I talked about it beforehand with Dave Holm, the actor from Dinner and a Movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't, the cast didn't know it. I, and I made this speech about how this guy couldn't marry Dangle because, you know, uh, it comes along once in a while where you're at the dance and you want that person to grab your hand and dance with you the rest of your life. And I looked at Dave and I said, Dave, will you dance with me? And I, we just planted a big old huge wet kiss and the whole <laughs> cast was like, what the f they had no idea it was going to happen. And so to see the looks on their faces, and then we just walked off together. And so that reaction was yeah. real. Yeah, wow. Because we went can, for it. It wasn't like a fake. surprise like, each other. That's great. Yeah. We can surprise each other. And I was constantly laughing on that show. There was a place when we were shooting very beginning uh, in uh, near the uh, Carson Sheriff Station where there were still a few mobile homes on this empty lot. Yeah. So the you know the regular cops from the sheriff station would come over and help us do security, and one time there was like a violent confrontation between a real homeless guy. It was almost like our show in, being happening in front of our show. Yeah, they had to, to get this violent guy out. He was trying to squat there and say, "I don't want to leave," and he was all drugged out. And the real cops had to come by. We're like, "This should be on our show." <laughs> so little things like that. Yeah. A couple of times so I saw cool. Dangles, Dingles fall out. Yeah, like, oh yeah, yeah. I know yeah. you got the short shorts, but the, did they have to fall out like that? <laughs> yeah. You know, that wasn't good. Uh, we were in the hot tub with Niecy Nash uh, yeah. doing an undercover thing where we're at a wedding and we're supposed to, when we finally get along and we have this hot tub scene where we're gonna kiss. Yeah. But in the same thing, she's like, 
I am a ma- at the time I am a married woman. I am a religious woman. <laughs> when we go to kiss, you will not stick your tongue anywhere. And they go action, and she just went ah! python tongue down my throat. <laughs> I was like, leave me alone. And of course, we got that in the shot. You so know? great, so little things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, I it must have been a great, blast, such man. Such great chemistry with the cast. It was such great. a fun, absolutely fun way to play. Fun way to, to so work. cool. Yeah. And the shows I'm pitching now is, is, are those types of shows, you know, improv based, trusting the actors that you work with, mm-hmm. knowing that they can do that. And hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll get to work on a show that's similar again. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm what, sure you will, man. I'm what, sure you will. What do you still want to accomplish in your career, do you think? It's weird. You know, it's, I say this in my act because now being a, a new parent and a, of a second daughter, a two, half, two and a half year old and a one month old, is that the more you key in on being a husband and a father and a parent, the more you realize that that this pursuit of fame is sort of weird. So it used mm. to be fame. So, so, it's, so some nights, you know, I'm at home and and I look at my wife and I say, honey, I got to go do a set at the improv. You know, there might be people, I got to do my set and I'll, and I'll see you later. And then I look at my two and a half year old daughter, Riley, and I say, Riley, I got to go. I love you very much, but not as much as I love the acceptance of strangers at the comedy <laughs> club and fame. So I got to go. <laughs> so now... What do I have to accomplish is just to, to work more and do the yeah. things that I think are creative. And whether or not they make huge money, that's fine. If I get to walk another red carpet again, that would be awesome because mm-hmm. it's fun. Yeah. Uh, but just to keep working. Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds kind of uh, altruistic, but I just hope working with cool people on shows that I love what, yeah. and whatever happens. With yep. Yeah, there you go. So, good attitude, man. Yeah. So, uh, true or false? Mm-hmm. You have completed more than 700 skydives. That is true. I think that I ended true. at 723. Wow. That's amazing. That's crazy. How when I think one... about it, you know, compared to the guys I did jump with, which were everyday skydivers, they had like 20,000 jumps. Uh-huh. And I had 700 over 15 years. So it was wow. really spaced out. But outside of that, when I think about it, it's like I jumped out of a plane 700 times. That's, That's so weird. So how did you get started? How were you introduced to it? Yeah, I was introduced in skydiving in 1989. I was always curious. And me and uh, my friend's buddies, roommates, went. They were two EMTs. They were the old, it was the old uh, Cessna and it was the old static line jump, which they don't really do anymore. And we all, all three of us jumped out. It's, it pulls your chute right away. So there's no free fall. Mm. Uh, this guy, Gavin, I think was his name. Uh, he had a bad opening and busted his ankle, so we ended up mm. taking him into the hospital in the car. And then I jumped two more times. I did what's called an accelerated free fall, where you have your own parachute, one-way radio, two instructors. Uh, I jumped out. I had a great flight, and then I got scared. I turned white. I landed. I said, you know what? I'm done. But I, but I put it on my resume. Mm-hmm. So six years later, I, come, I end up moving to L.A. I put it on my resume. There's a guy, Colin Reno, who works at William Morris, who was skydiving at the time. He said, yeah. you're a skydiver. See on your resume. I, resume. Let's go this weekend. I'm like, oh. call my bluff. So I go. I start over again, and I just do another tandem. And I mm-hmm. went, this is fun. And then I just started the AFF program, levels one through eight. Mm-hmm. Got my own rig and started going every weekend. I, I really wow. enjoyed it. So you just really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah, it was great. It was just a way to have fun. and and, and uh, Did you wear one of those little cameras on your phone? Oh, yeah. I got so much footage of everything. I bet. Yeah, I, I, back then, it was kind of the bigger, clunkier ones. Nowadays, it's little GoPros. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those, yeah. Does your mind just go blank when you're there, or are you just sort of taking it? And what are you feeling while you're... It's relative. There's so many types of dunk jumps. There's hop and pops where you jump out at 4,000 feet and just pop your chute mm-hmm. right away and coast down. There's co- cross-country skydives where you go up at dusk, get out at 13,000 feet and throw your parachute so you mm-hmm. can stay up there forever. And you take mm-hmm. a plastic water bottle, yeah. an empty one, and throw it and then try to chase it with your canopy. And it would, oh, it would fall at about the same oh, speed. Wow. Yeah. It just while all while the sunset is there and you got music going in oh, your ears. So cool. uh, hmm. There's free fall dives, there's tracking dives where somebody would be on their back and go this way and you would chase after them like that. We jumped in the snow in Denver. Uh, I jumped in Hawaii over the ocean. I jumped out of a hot air balloon. That was one of my last jumps. Sometimes you're just thinking about flying relative to your friends and sometimes right, you're right. by yourself just going, this is I'm amazing. Fine. Yeah. So, uh, what, is, what does success mean to you? Um, I, I think success is, you know what, is continuing work in this business and continuing to be, I guess, uh, viable and liked. And I think the second part is more important, you know. Mm. We love guys like Jess Harnell and Billy West and Maurice LaMarche and John DiMaggio and, and all those people. And I think that's what success means, is working 
within your craft and also being well liked. Yeah. Maybe not the most successful out of everybody, yeah. but just somebody that says, "Hey man, I'm so glad to be working with you." Yeah, and uh, you're a part of that of that yeah. of that elite yeah. group. Yeah. Do yeah. you think that you're easy to work with? I think so. Yeah. You know, there's sometimes I've had a clash with directors and I'll, I'll be in a mood where mm -hmm. like I don't like the way you're directing me and then I'll have to back off. Or there's yeah. sometimes you're right. And you know yeah. like you know, you know they were wrong, but I think overall, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I'm not the person that's always on my cell phone texting and all yeah. that kind of that goes on. Yeah. But uh, I might be goofing around with the guy next door, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, yeah, I'm pretty easy to, to yeah. work with. That's cool. Do you have any thoughts for anybody? We have you know viewers all over the world at varying levels of breaking into the business or in the business. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts for them about what it takes to be in the business or maybe some encouragement or just words of maybe... I advice think, that have helped you. I think the thoughts now is that the ball game has changed. In the old days, you did have to make a tape. You did have to produce uh, a great demo, which you do, which is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. But along with that, there are people that are able to get flash animation, do their own projects, mm -hmm. animate their own things, create their mm -hmm. own YouTube channel, and come through it that way. And even though the voiceover world is tough to get into, and like we always get questions, I want to do voiceover, and you're like, well, kid, let me tell you. Yeah. Doesn't mean that somebody new can't come along and just and hit right away yeah and sometimes even if you hit right away you might fall out again yeah so I guess the advice is that if you want to do it try it by any means necessary try to stick with it because uh, it's worth it mm -hmm. you know don't expect success right away and if it does come expect to it for it to end and for you to jump back in the ring again yeah. so and that there's anything's possible you don't have to go through the there's not just one way to skin the, the proverbial cat yeah. anymore mm -hmm. and i think yeah you do see people from like from titmouse and from six point harness the guys that created dick figures from mondo media my friend aaron simpson has that site where these kids happy tree happy tree friends uh these they made their own cartoons yeah you mm -hmm. know and they produced them and they do the voice work for it and they didn't have to go through the ordinary circuit yeah. right. the annoying orange person i was yes. just gonna say that I you know, know i remember I watching that on youtube for the longest time, and saying like, "This is so the weird," most subscribed and then channel all of sudden, all time. yeah, it's like it's like the biggest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah, but you never know, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I'm working on a uh, cartoon with uh, that I made again with we did Off the Curb, which was featured in uh, John DiMaggio's movie. I know that voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, hopefully, we could bring that back. We had a few episodes on Mondo, and then I just worked on another sort of. Uh, uh, kind of a happy tree creatures theme where it's a, a little bear that goes out looking for his mother and father and meets really bad humans along the way kind of along the lines of uh kung fu where yeah. david carradine would go out always seeking peace hey yeah. china man look i don't yeah. want to kai, 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 kai. yeah and so that happens <laughs> to this bear. Love that show. <laughs> yeah it's kind of the same yeah. thing old bears a sweet yeah. old bear and looking for his mom and dad but yeah. always runs into people that want to do him harm and he's like Ooh. Heads come off. Yeah. He doesn't realize he's Frankenstein. Yeah, but he's a sweet bear. So. That's so great. Oh. Working on that right now. That's beautiful, man. Well, we wish you all the luck yes. in the world, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, why don't we put Carlos on the spot real quick and okay, ask him Carlos. a question, and we'll uh, close yeah. the show out. Give me a number between five and one hundred and twenty-nine. Uh, twenty-three. Let's do that. Three. If you could change places with any of your friends, who would you choose to be? Mm. If I could choose places. <laughs> With any of my friends, uh, who would I be? Uh, 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 it would be, uh, let me see. Uh, this is my answer. Sophia Loren. <laughs> ah, so nice. If I could change places with any of my friends, who would I be? I would be... Maybe... Um, God, who would I say? I like. I think you know my friend Eric Bowser because he's so talented. He's so mm -hmm. just exploding right now, and he's young. Yeah. And everything's out in front. And I think there's that wish. I oh, maybe I could go back and and do it again and do it yeah, this yeah. way. Yeah, because hey, he seems to be happy. He's got a great career. So yeah, and he's and he's nice. So and that means I wouldn't have to change. Probably watching this yeah. right now. Going, I so, want to change with What do you, you think of that, Eric? If. Yeah, if you want to change, if you want two kids, if you want a beautiful <laughs> wife, even though your girlfriend you is very switch. beautiful, yeah. 
We could just switch for a week. What is it? You get what are the, are the a hall pass? You get a hall pass. You get a hall pass. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, I like that it's not somebody like like Brad Pitt. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. He's in voiceover. That's he's awesome. really cool. Yeah. I don't even. I don't think awesome. I'd want to be. Well, what because would he you has do? that look in his eye too, where yeah. everything's so fun for him. It's yeah. Everything's yeah. so new and, great. What would yeah. you do differently if you were starting out right now? I don't think I'd do anything differently because, you know, it's that whole chaos theory. It's that whole, it's a wonderful life. It means everything would change. Mm -hmm. It means I would have never met my wife. I wouldn't have my two Absolutely. daughters. So yeah. I would do yeah. the same yeah. thing I did do. I Beautiful. love it. No I regrets. A, I would dye my hair earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I would do. You're Dude, a silver yeah. fox. what a freaking pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks, Carlos. Thank Carlos Arzaki. Continued success. Thank, Thank you so much. Wow, wow. Very, very cool, man. We hope you guys enjoyed today's show. We know you did, and we'll see you next week. Hi, my name is Carlos Jaime Alasraki, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. And I got to say, this was a really cool show. Uh, it's like I'm inside Jeannie's bottle, Barbara Eden's bottle in I Dream of Genie. And these guys are the coolest people on Ventura Boulevard in Los Angeles. Even this is, these are the people that uh, Tom Petty wrote about all the vampires head west on Ventura Boulevard, something like that in that song, something like that. If, the, if there were vampires heading west or east on Ventura Boulevard, it would be these guys, because they make you believe that you could live forever in this silver padded Oakland Raiderette type of room. And it's been really cool. They made me feel good. I hope they, I made them feel good. And here's the bottom line, is I feel younger. I don't know how that happened. All I know is that I feel younger. Well, that concludes uh, part two with Carlos Alazraki. And man, is that guy freaking talented or what? He's amazing. And voices, make sure voices. you keep up with him so you know where he's going to be. Because yes. you want to see him live. He's Absolutely. awesome. And go to YouTube and check out all his comedy stuff, his stand-up stuff. Right. Really, really funny yes. stuff. Yes. yes. And... While you're on the internet, keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. We'll see you next week, you guys. Take care, and just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz.